The following program is presented by the Metropolitan Library Service Agency. Welcome to All About Kids, a program focusing on the interests of children and young people and some of the issues affecting them. Our topic tonight is young people's involvement in politics. Moderator Ross Corson will be talking with Jenna Weisblatt, Youth Coordinator for the City of St. Paul, St. Paul student Wendy Quesada, a participant in Youth Vote 92, Steve Sandell from the Humphrey Institute, and Minneapolis South High School student Jeremy Kalin. This discussion will focus on the exciting involvement of many young people in politics today. Here we are, it's election night 1992. It's been a very exciting political year. Uh, there's been a lot of interest, uh, not only on the part of adults, but also of young people. And there's a variety of programs to help young people learn about politics and get involved too. That's what we're gonna be talking about this evening. Uh, Jenna, why don't you tell us a little bit about Youth Vote 92 in St. Paul. Youth Vote 92 is a program that was put together by a group of students, Wendy, who's one of them, um, earlier this year. And the students came together because of a concern about not their voices not being heard. Mayor Scheibel brought them together. And at that time, they talked about different ways to make their voices be heard. And one of the things that they thought about was, well, we have a political process, but we don't really spend a lot of time in school. We don't spend a lot of time learning how to use this. And so as a result, they talked about making not only just voting at the election time, but actually going through the process and learning how to use it. So um, actually, Wendy, why don't you talk a little bit about the process of Youth Vote 92? Well, it all started with a video, and we'll be seeing it in just a moment. And uh, we actually set up so that the kids w in the public schools would do the caucuses in their classrooms, and they would talk about the resolutions that they were most concerned about and then they would they wrote the resolutions. Yes, yeah, they wrote it. Mm -hmm. And they would pick delegates from each classroom, two delegates, and then they would go on to the city, Mock City Convention. And so it's just like the real thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Then that was our goal, to get them familiar with the political process. And at the convention, we talked about the five top resolutions, and they just debated on it, and it was, you know, it was, it was a good turnout, so. Mm -hmm. And where did it go from there? Well, um, they voted in the schools for their presidents, and they got a lot of ideas. And on the resolutions. Yeah, on, mm -hmm. the, on the resolutions, too. And they got a lot of ideas in their heads about how the voting goes and how the political process is, and we've gotten a lot of good comments uh -huh. from. And so these were students in both the public and private schools in St. Paul, is that right? Yeah, right. that's right. And do you have any idea how many students actually were involved in this? Well, in the public schools, it was a mandatory program for mm -hmm. ninth through 12th graders. Some seventh and eighth graders participated in it. And in the private schools, we had three of the five that uh, participated full force. Mm -hmm. And so altogether, um, most of the students from ninth through 12th grade in the city of St. Paul had an opportunity to at least experience a caucus. The actual delegates and the kids who made it to the convention were 720 students from all over St. Paul. Mm -hmm. And you were one of them, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun? Yeah. It was pretty much really fun. <laughs> uh -huh. And you learned a lot? Yeah. Uh -huh. I wasn't actually a delegate, but, um, you know, the, politi the politics committee actually did it and um, emceed everything. So we were just, like, helping everybody uh -huh. go through the resolutions and everything. So this means that uh, four years from now, or actually two years from now, when we next have the caucuses in Minnesota, uh, and presumably when a lot of these students will have turned 18 mm -hmm. and will be voters, uh, they will be able to participate in the real thing and they'll be better participants exactly. because they've already kind of gone through uh, the process. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. That's really important because of the fact that we spend a lot of time in our school learning how to read and write, arithmetic, and all these different yeah. things, but we don't learn how to be good citizens. Yeah. And that this is something that hopefully they won't be scared when it was my turn to come around and do it. I was a little nervous. I mean, I didn't know what to do. And so hopefully the kids now will 
won't be afraid. They'll go in and just do it. Now, you, you had this video to kind of entice them uh, <laughs> in, into the process uh, early on. And this was actually a student produced uh, video to kind of, uh, well, why don't you tell us a little bit about the video? Well, the video um, just really talks about our views on politics and what we think of politics. And there's um, a couple of scenes where we say what our thoughts are on, the, um, on some of the resolutions and just really what we really think about politics. Okay. Well, why don't we take a look at this video? Are you worried about your school, your community, your city, your state, even your nation? Wake up, vote. You vote 92. I believe politics is an opportunity for people of all cultures, genders, and abilities to have a say in their government and in society in general. As an African-American woman, I believe it is important for us to fight against injustices in our community and in our government or we will lose our voice. Politics makes me think about the fact that you don't have a say in government today and that adults are mandating the way we should live our lives. I believe we are mature enough to make our own decisions, if not all of them. I think politics means as a way for people to elect officials into Congress, the White House, who share the same viewpoints on such issues as environment, education, and foreign policy. I creo que la política cambia e influye las decisiones del pueblo. I think politics influences and changes people's decisions. When I think of politics, I think of the search for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Politics to me is the opportunity to make changes to better our future. Lulu politics hides all gate one or two, gate third jaw, gate she bar, it would get you tell about your journey. Politics to me means caring about your community, having an opinion, and more importantly, voicing that opinion. Politics means getting involved, voting, and making a difference. Politics is what builds responsibility, leadership, and commitment in all of us. So get involved with Youth Vote 92. Mr. President. Mr. President, I'd like to know what you're going to do about the growing population of gangs in the inner city. But Mr. President, I'd like to know why you're spending $5.4 billion on Star Wars when the Cold War is over and the real war is in the streets of America. Mr. President, what are your views on abortion? But Mr. President, I'd like to know how you can take a woman's rights to choose by claiming you're pro-life, but yet you feel you have the right to take the life of people by the death penalty. Please help me understand your confusion. Mr. President, you claim that you are the education president. If you are what you say you are, how come in the past four years of my high school education, my school has had to cut down on ESL programs, sports programs, teachers, books, supplies, and opportunities for alternative learning? Again, Mr. President, I did not hear your response to my question. Why are you tearing up my school and my chances for a better education? Some people might have thought this video was corny. Other people might have thought it was interesting. But the fact of the matter is, voting in a political process is very important. And in order for your voice to be heard, you must take it upon yourself to do something. Youth Vote 92 was developed for students, by students, as an opportunity for you to be heard. This is your time to do something, to help each other change our status quo in society today. Because if you don't, there's no telling who's going to be running our country tomorrow. Is that it? Is that it? Do we cut the tape now? <laughs> I walked the store than I thought.
Well, that was a great video. Uh, what kind of response did you get? Well, um, we meant for it to be controversial. So um, some people were against it, some people were with it, but we got a lot of good, pretty good comments. We got um, the kids thinking about what they really, um, what they're really looking for in the president that they want to choose for. And mm -hmm. So. So it got people started yeah, in thinking really, about it. Yeah. Now, one impression I had from that video is is that uh, when. Um, the uh, students were talking about what politics is. They're talking really not just about voting in elections. They're really talking about a lot, lot more than that, aren't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The kids, um, when they were putting this together, they, they scripted the whole thing themselves. They um, thought of everything to put in it, how it was going to run, and so on and so forth. And when they were thinking about it, they did a lot of serious talking about what this means to me. And they did a lot of arguing <laughs> with each other, too. <laughs> what do you mean, you know? And of course not. And uh, it was, as you could see, they had some pretty different views in the video. Yeah, yeah, that's for, that's for sure. Now, now, Steve and Jeremy, you're involved with the program through the Humphrey Forum at the University of Minnesota's Humphrey Institute of Public Affairs. And you're also trying to get uh, young people like Jeremy, uh, involved and interested in, in politics in this broader sense of, of sure. issues and problem solving, all that. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're up to? Well, the forum has a lot in common with Youth Vote uh, 92. We're interested in uh, encouraging young people, uh, some very young people, all the way through high school and college, to recognize that they have a real important role to play, a real legitimate role to play in politics. The forum is an exhibit. This, Hubert Humphrey's the central character of the exhibit at the Humphrey uh, Forum, but the issues of, of uh, justice, of, of freedom, of human dignity, of uh, self-expression are all part of that, and it's all part of what it takes to be involved in politics. Just like students in that video talked about, um, uh, politics is a place to get started, politics is a place to have some responsibility, politics is a place to ask questions that are going to be part of um, the topics that we discuss in all areas of public life. The, the work we do with um, South High School and, and the Voices class that Jeremy's part of is uh, a chance to work with juniors and seniors in high school to examine issues that they think are important and um, uh, germane in, in areas that they think that they can have a, a real effect on. Um, tomorrow I think Steve Kramer from the City Council in Minneapolis is going to be part of the uh, conversation at Voices and I think on Thursday, uh, um, Sharon Sales Belton, Sharon Sales -Belton yes. will be there. Uh, talk a little bit about some of the work you've been doing lately. Um, well, I guess the Voices class is is a video collab collaboration with um, Minneapolis Television Network and South and the Humphrey Forum, like Steve said, and it's basically an open discussion about this year or this trimester. It's about issues that affect creating a human society. This is the fall and of 1992. This is the fall of 1992. Uh -huh. and, and so what we've been concerned with mainly is, is working with discussing issues such as how important is education, how important is the role of, what kind of role does, does local politics play as opposed to, to national politics and state and state government, um, and also personal issues as, such as um, who do you who do you vote for and how do you make the decision in voting and what choice what the choices that you make every day how do they affect um, people throughout the state throughout the city throughout the world and I guess um, one thing that we're concerned with in making our video projects is is taking a side and and presenting that side and trying to back it up with facts and and solid opinions and, and not being real wishy-washy about it and trying to, to really make a statement. Now you go out of the classroom too, right? I mean this isn't mm -hmm. just you know sitting at the desk in, in the right. school building or whatever. You, you go out and get in touch with the community, is that right? Yeah, we've gone to, um, we've gone to City Hall. Um, just last week we went to the Walker Arts Center. Um, we've, we've gone to a lot of places. We've gone to the, to the government center in downtown and we've gone on retreats to to do personality, um, personality invoices and, uh -huh. and stuff like that, and so it's not just sit two hours of sitting in the class. It's two hours of really experiencing what government is like and 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 how to get involved in in politics and and government and making 
make a difference. Right. When we uh, started the, the Voices class, we were looking for a way to describe what it is we wanted to do. And we put together a name, Voices, which is an acronym standing for Values, Options, Issues, Choices for Society. And it's a chance for students to take a look at their values, the values that other people um, uh, discuss, and then the ideas uh, and values that are represented in public life. Um, as the students in the uh, video uh, suggested that they, they, they saw some sort of lack of credibility between uh, themselves and leadership, between the ideas that leadership in society these days is discussing and, and, and what it is they're doing. Um, voices and, and much of what we do at the forum is a chance to suggest to students that there's a way to become involved in the affairs of the community that they live in and uh, a way to ask questions which direct discussion and a way to take some action. Uh, and I think that, that the, the, the teachers that, that uh, uh, the voices work with at South are doing a terrific job, and I think the students are really insightful as well. Now, you've been doing this for a couple of years, right? And so, and each time the students get together and make these videos, is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. Just like you are right yeah. now. Uh, we want to show you one that was made last spring. Um, uh, one of the, the topics of discussion lately has been the use of Indian nicknames for athletic teams. Um, Students in the class discuss that, and in a small group, uh, uh, a production company organized themselves to to uh, uh, produce a 12-minute piece, which was shown on Channel Six, part of our show, uh, Video Voices, and um, it examined, in, in I think a, a very interesting and provocative way, the issues of uh, uh, of the use of Indian nicknames, trivializing um, uh, traditions and values for sports teams. I'd like to show you that piece yeah. now. Why don't we take a look at that? Every uh, human rights organization in this country is joining this effort. And we just launched a uh, national campaign to rid all sports and amateur uh, athletic teams uh, from names, racist stereos, logos, mascots that discriminate against another uh, person's race, whether it be Indian, Jewish, black, or any other race of human beings. Well, that was an excellent video, um, and this was produced by students at South High School in Minneapolis, is that right? It was done during the spring of 1992 by a group of four or five students at South. It, uh, it's a good example, this was a, a clip of a piece that's about eight minutes long, and it's a real good example of how uh, students understand, and I think that, that, that more and more people are beginning to understand that politics isn't just voting, it's not just going to the polls, it's not just uh, the things that, Russ, you and I grew up thinking that one of these days would be a citizen and we could do this. It's, politics is part of all of our lives. Politics is personal, politics is local, and I think this is a way that, that the students at, at South and, and Jeremy um, begin to recognize politics and, and begin to do something about it. And this was an issue that was of concern for a lot of people, I mean adults, mm -hmm. young people uh, of all races and, and, and all of that, and at South High School this was a hot issue I guess at that yeah, time it, and today. Um, there's a high Native American population at, at South and Recently on Columbus Day, we, we had a big discussion about, about the effect that Columbus has had on, on American society and, and whether it was good, bad, or, or both, or neither, or whatever. And part of it was, part of the discussion was, was centered on this video. And, and I think that it was general consensus that, that the point of view that the video took was, was the popular and PC, politically correct <laughs> point, point of view to take, and that, that it's no longer... Um, possible to really discriminate against against 
groups of people for for reasons which in the past were correct. Right. And this wasn't some kind of abstract, far away in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. sort of issue. I mean, this was yeah. right here in town of concern to each one of us. Yeah, part of the attraction was that it was held in Minneapolis at the Metrodome, and it was a su footage from the Super Bowl. And, right. and Super Bowl in 92, right? Yeah, and yeah. the 1991 World Series. Yeah, yeah. Good. Well, now, the Humphrey Forum also does some other things besides uh, the Voices program in conjunction with Minneapolis South High School. Can you tell us a little sure. bit more about that? We um, um, teach classes and workshops to teachers and uh, to uh, students. Probably 15,000 groups, 15,000 students come through the, the forum each year to talk about issues of government and issues of politics. We also produce a newspaper. Um, 19th Avenue is the name of the paper, and we've been producing it for a couple of years. There are 8,000 subscribers throughout Minnesota, and this issue, the, the most recent issue of 19th Avenue, has a cover story uh, called Behind the Ballot, and it's really about the Electoral College. But most of all, it's about the electors who are part of Minnesota's group of people uh, who will eventually choose the president. Three of them, uh, a fellow named Paul Gam, who's a Republican elector, uh, a fellow named Matthew Little, uh, a Democratic elector, and Sue Rockney, also a member of the, the um, uh, Democratic elector. Each talking about politics from their own point of view. Really interesting. Um, um, Matthew Little, uh, uh, an African American who talks about growing up and becoming age 21 and not being able to vote. Paul Gam, who is a, a, an Asian American immigrant and talking about his own home country of Hong Kong soon becoming a democracy. And of course, Sue Rockney, a Democrat, who simply says, Politics is fun. And that's why he should be part of it as well. And it's a chance for us to suggest to students that there are many ways to become involved in politics. And there are lots of good stories about how students and their teachers at schools have chosen the, uh, one of the articles of, from 19th Avenue and done something about it. Well, let me ask you, uh, all of you actually, is, you know, here it is 1992, we're in the midst of a presidential election, so there's always this kind of heightened interest. Uh, you know, what are the issues that young people in particular are concerned about uh, this year. I guess the issues were part of the Youth Vote 92 program, so maybe we, we can start there. W what were the issues that, that the, uh, the uh, teenagers in St. Paul uh, expressed the most concern about? Well, actually, the top five resolutions were in the paper. It's called the Pioneer Primer, and this is uh, a little clip from our convention. And the top five resolutions are on there. It's like education, abortion, environment, health care, military aid, cut, and, you know, things like that. So The students turned in 350 resolutions in total. And of the 350 resolutions, the top one was more money should be spent on education, less money <laughs> yeah. on the military. That was yeah. number one. 70 resolutions came in looking like that. Um, the students were very serious. They had a lot of important issues, the national health care, the abortion, and the kids at the convention actually got an opportunity to debate these issues. So we had these kids up there and they're debating very, very strongly why they're pro-choice or why they're pro-life and just all their different positions on things. And we had other issues that kids were concerned about that resolutions came up all the way to. Um, one student said in a resolution that they should get an opportunity to look at their school pictures before they're given to them. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a great The resolution. personal is political, yes. That's right. <laughs> right. But they really um, coincide a lot with what the issues are that are out there right now for the adults. Yeah. One of the classes we teach at the forum is called Getting Elected, and we use it with young, young children uh, uh, particularly. It's a lot of fun. It's very active. Kids from fourth grade through seventh or eighth grade um, uh, choose candidates. They write slogans, and they develop platforms and give speeches, and then develop commercials to present their ideas. And it doesn't matter if the children are in fourth grade or seventh or ninth grade or even when, when, when Jeremy's group comes to the forum. Those issues which are very personal, the cost of education, um, the right to make uh, personal decisions, um, the issues of defense and uh, um, the, uh, the economy and the effect that the national debt have, have on us. They're familiar to students, students have a point of view, and of course the older, the more sophisticated their conversation is, but those issues are really, really important to, to people, and I think they, they want to do some, take some action and have some effect on them. Um, I think that, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you guys touched on this, but I think that along with the issues that have been stated already, I think AIDS is a, is a very pressing issue for, for kids our age because I think that, that part of the way that we feel is that is that w the, policy, the national policy and local policies um, about AIDS are, are being made by people who are out of the risk groups. And um, whereas we're in the high risk groups and it's, and it's our generation that's gonna be affected by, by, by AIDS. And, and I think what I've heard is that as many as a third of, of our generation is gonna be 
affected either with a family member or themselves being being having the AIDS virus. And I think that that we're really concerned with with having people who are distant distanced from the problem making policy decisions about AIDS and and that there's really no edu major education reforms being being brought up as far as AIDS edu education mm -hmm. and and condoms being passed in, out in school and and different ways to treat the to to not become affected. So this seems to be a case where where uh, the leaders and the policy makers are the ones who are not concerned enough mm -hmm. while the young people are the ones who really have the right. have the strong concerns here. Well, uh, kind of related to that, uh, you know, you, we hear these criticisms and it's probably every older generation makes it of the younger generation. Uh, going back for who knows how long. Uh, now you hear, you know, young people now, it's the MTV generation. You know, they're glued to the tube. Uh, you know, they don't really care about uh, larger issues going on in the world. Um, is that true? Well, if, if, if um, people watch them TV, they do a lot of stuff on voting, and they really get us thinking about what we're doing and what we're thinking about, and they just know what we're thinking thinking and now you know we're trying to get everybody involved in the political process and everybody seems to enjoy it and take it seriously they feel important because they I mean it seems like we're never heard they make um, critic they criticize us well you know they really don't care like you said and it's just it just puts us down you know we are the future and um, you know we're the ones who are going growing up learning about the political process and we do feel important when it comes to us the decisions come to us and we're proud to make the decisions that we believe in so yeah you know one thing that I've noticed in working with youth and that Mayor Scheibel has noticed and has implemented by putting this program on is that if you give the kids a chance if you give the teens a chance to express themselves and actually look at the issues you have some confidence in what they're gonna say and you let them think about it it's amazing I mean They've got great ideas, great thoughts, and interesting ways to solve problems, and they are aware of things, you know. Things do get in there, you know. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, I don't know about that, but they do, and it is happening. Well, now, Ross and I were talking on the phone yesterday, and I, I said I, I, I uh, believe that there's an enthusiasm for politics among um, Amer Americans generally. Uh, there's, there's, there's certainly a lot of TV being watched, but there are also the, um, uh, an act of enthusiasm to respond to the issues that Jeremy's talking about. Um, a generation ago, the issue, the, the war in Vietnam and the draft coalesced um, political opinion and action among young people. High school students got up and left school. The, they had teach-ins. They organized uh, ways to learn about an issue that affected their lives. And the same thing is happening today. Once the issue is identified and once students recognize or young people recognize that there's a way to find leverage, um, to move exactly. the fulcrum exactly. in a way that they, yep. that, 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 that they can uh, um, um, move this issue there. There's no more greater, there's no greater energy available. Teaching so, the steps. I, so, think, yeah. I think all that's, all that's needed is just an example saying that, that it's possible to make change. I think as, as soon as, as, as myself and my friends and people our age see that it's possible to do, to make good, to make changes for the better, then it, it just reinforces our concept of change and, and and the ability to actually make a difference. So it's a lot of it is it's providing the opportunities to really participate, to really get your hands on with real issues and real politics. And I think what we've been talking about here with Youth Vote 92, with the Humphrey Forum and the Voices Program, I guess gives us a lot of hope for the future. I want to thank you all for being with us on Election Day 1992. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to see these young people involved in politics and seriously interested in issues. Thanks to all of our participants, and thanks to all of you for joining us on All About Kids. Please tune in again.
This has been a presentation of Hennepin County Library in conjunction with the Twin Cities Metropolitan Library Service Agency.